Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for this Fox 13 News special presentation. I'm Kelly Chapman. In 2021, the Fox 13 investigative team covered a lot of ground with its reporting, from holding those in prominent positions accountable to shedding light on deep-rooted issues. And tonight, we're taking a look at the change journalism can create in our own communities. Let's go ahead and bring in now investigative reporters Adam Herbetz and Nate Carlisle to discuss some of their biggest stories of the year. Thanks so much for joining me tonight, guys. 2021, how could we forget? It started with an event that many of us will never forget for the remainder of our lives. It was the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. A number of Utahns were involved in those riots. And Nate, you spoke to a man who was there, who participated in the riots. That's right. Uh, Landon Copeland is from Southern Utah. He drove to Washington. Photos and videos from that day show him in altercations with police. He's since been charged with felonies and is in jail awaiting trial. Let's hear what Landon Copeland told me. He says he wasn't looking for trouble. But Landon Copeland found it anyway, clashing with police outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. He's accused of shoving officers, pushing a fence at them as part of the group that breached police lines and the Capitol itself. What uh, drove you or uh, encouraged you to go to Washington, D.C. on January 6th? Police brutality mostly. Unfortunately, this is not just a problem of the left. What about President Trump? What factor did he play in you going to Washington, D.C.? He invited us to be there. Copeland said he drove to D.C. from southern Utah with his girlfriend and others. My full intention there was to go into this building and sit down and, and let's just discuss. I do believe that the jury, they will see me as nothing more than a soldier trying to defend his people from the people that were attacking them. And uh, whatever the cost may be, I would willingly do it again for the people that I love. Wow, what an interview. Nate, how many journalists have been able to interview any suspects in the insurrection? Not many. Few have given interviews to journalists. Copeland originally agreed to meet us at his home in Cedar City, but he was arrested as we were driving to speak to him. That interview you saw is actually via the visitation system at the jail in Hurricane, Utah. What is the status of the Utahns charged in the Capitol riot? Seven Utahns have been charged. Copeland has the most serious charges. He could go to trial in 2022. One man from Sandy's pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor for being somewhere he wasn't supposed to be that day. He's scheduled to be sentenced in January. If similar guilty pleas are any guide, he will not receive prison time. Nate, thanks so much. You'll have to let us know what happens. I've got to bring in Adam Herbetz now. It was earlier this year. Adam, your investigation exposed an executive at the University of Utah who got the job essentially from a resume that he built upon lies and fabrications. Tell us about that. His name is Christopher Massamine. He was the executive director of Pioneer Theater Company at the University of Utah, but his resume was very inflated to say the least. He called himself a major player in the film, television, theater, video game, advertising, and music industries. He claimed to have won a Tony Award. He claimed to have worked for some of the biggest companies in the country like Coca-Cola, Old Spice, Nintendo. We found out he even lied about his degree, claiming he got a master's and bachelor's degree all within three years. That was not true. He tricked these recruiters, these recruiters, by the way, being paid thousands of dollars to vet this guy's resume. And we also found out the lies did not stop after he got the job. Take a look at this clip. Even after Massamine was hired by the university, getting paid tens of thousands of dollars more than his predecessor, the lies did not stop. He claims the National Performing Arts Action Association awarded him the Humanitarian of the Year Award in Washington, D.C., along with an honorary key to the city. University of Utah published an article congratulating him. But our investigation confirms the NPAAA does not exist, and the medal he's wearing in these photos can be purchased online for $4.25. I would love to meet this extraordinary individual. It could be a movie story here. Let's build a bright, beautiful future together. Thank you, and see you soon. What a web. Adam, tell us what's the fallout here for taxpayers, because I'm assuming a lot of money was wasted because of this. Oh, yeah, we're definitely talking about a lot of money. I mean, he was being paid more than $200,000 a year in taxpayer-funded salary and benefits. He's not there anymore, but he did receive a settlement, 175000 
more dollars essentially just to go away, to resign from his position. The university also spent $36,000 on that search firm. They're called Management Consultants for the Arts. They were supposed to catch all of these discrepancies way before it got to this point. And the experts we interviewed said, look, this is something, a resume that was so inflated, there were so many red flags, it should not have gotten to the public, to the media, to expose this. This is something that should have been caught way before it got to this point. And it got to you, Adam. Great investigation. Yeah, Thanks thank so you. much. We want to talk now about an issue involving local police departments and their canine officers. This became a high profile topic last year when one incident prompted the Salt Lake City Police Department to stop using canines to take down suspects. But Nate, you found that these types of violent issues were really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to other departments within our own area. Yeah, our news gathering partners at the Salt Lake Tribune obtained videos from Salt Lake City, West Valley City, and Unified Police. Of the 39 videos we watched, eight showed suspects with their hands in the air or face down with the canines bit. And in seven other cases, the suspects actually were in handcuffs and the dogs kept biting. This has led to some litigation against police. Forces in Utah, dog handlers, though, say this isn't such a black and white issue. Here's what one former handler says. Hit is the command canine handlers give their dogs to attack. You see our client standing on the counter of the Burger King with his hands in the air, uh, completely giving himself up, and the officers pulled our client off the counter, and then the canine officer ordered the dog to hit, hit, hit several times. This boy reacted and started to try to grab the face of the dog to pull it off of his leg, and then he was met with orders from the police. Please stop fighting the dog! Stop fighting! Well, it depends on what your definition of complying is. Joe McBride is president of Salt Lake City's police union. He says just because someone's hands are up or the person is lying on the ground doesn't mean they're not a threat. If they're in a situation where they can still access a weapon, or they can still flee, or they're in a vehicle, or they can do something that puts the officer, officer in jeopardy, they're not necessarily compliant. But you're saying in those circumstances, it may be appropriate to go ahead and order the dog to attack anyway, or bite anyway? Correct. Gosh, those canines so valuable to police departments, despite seeing that video, Nate. Will Salt Lake City still be using their canines to apprehend suspects? They're not using the canines to apprehend suspects right now, but they still are using dogs. I mean, they're using dogs still to you know, sniff drugs, sniff for bombs, those sort of things. Uh, those are different skill sets for dogs. Not every police dog is trained to attack. All right, Nate, thanks so much. We're just getting started here. Such great <laughs> stories, guys. Still ahead, years worth of smudged paperwork leads to customers on the hook for thousands of dollars in payments they never agreed to. How it happened and what's changed, all thanks to our investigation. Plus, it's a false and misleading statement. That's a violation of the Consumer Protection Act. Event Smart Home is being sued in federal court, and this video is playing a key role in the case. We'll explain the allegations brought against the company. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. One of the biggest investigations Fox 13 News reported on started with one smudge on one customer's contract with General RV. Then all of a sudden it was a full-blown statewide fraud investigation into the company with customers saying the ending is bittersweet. Adam, I remember this story. Wow, this really blew up. Yeah, bittersweet is definitely the right way to put it. I mean, we're talking about from one customer to multiple customers. We called the investigation the general RV smudge because we found dozens of contracts with numbers that just didn't look right. Two different numbers typed on top of each other. The math did not add up, and these customers were being hit with these huge balloon payments that they say were a total surprise. We're talking about $63,000 for that first customer. Then we found another one, $83,000. We found one all the way up to $105,000. The state says because of our reporting, that's why they opened that criminal investigation. They absolutely believe still to this day that crimes were committed by four General RV employees in Draper. 
but those crimes could not be prosecuted because too much time had passed between the time they signed those contracts to the time that they submitted everything to the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office. Customers say, look, it's frustrating because in each case, the customers' credit unions are the ones who made things right in the end, not General RV. The good news, though, those credit unions did go back. They erased those balloon payments and were able to refinance everything so that the customers weren't on the hook for all of that money. I am so happy with the job that Adam's done for me. Like I said, I can't express it enough how grateful I am that you took the story on. Some of the employees blamed outdated computer software, which is why they taped a piece of paper over the documents as they printed. The employees told investigators, quote, thousands of deals were done this way, but their goal was not to deceive the customer. Still, the state says it was never able to find a reasonable explanation for so many instances of incorrect math. The one person that I believe to be the one that uh, was the mastermind of that is no longer in the state of Utah. He's not here. I think they should go to prison. I mean, it was like everything about it was wrong. There is no question in my mind that if a, if a complainant would have came forward one year, 18 months into that loan payment and, and noticed that, I believe we would have got a prosecution. I have no doubt in my mind we would have got a prosecution on that. Gosh, you see that and all that money, it makes you feel so bad for the customers. Adam, you mentioned that four employees were behind this. Do we know the names of those four employees? Where are they? Yeah, they're not in Utah anymore. We do know the names of the four employees. Well, I should say the state knows the names of the four employees. They're not releasing that to the public or to the media because in the end, they have not been charged with a crime. But we do know none of them work for General RV anymore. At least some of them are out of state, and at least some of them do still work in the financing industry. So customers say, look, we wish those names could be public because at the very least, this should be kind of a buyer beware situation. I mean, these people have bosses that might want to take a look at all of their paperwork at these other companies, not General RV, but other companies. They are still doing business. This is a trick that could definitely be repeated if they chose to do that, as we just showed you on the clip with that piece of tape over the contracts. And customers need to know how to catch it before too much time passes, because it's a statute of limitations here that really was, was the That's big heartbreaking for the customers, yeah. yeah. Adam, what was the motive behind messing with those numbers? Well, if they don't make a sale, they don't get a commission, right? I mean, at the end of the day, these are customers who said they would not have bought an RV if it weren't for the fact that they were able to finance it over this very long period of time. In most cases, we're talking about 20-year loans, but instead what they found on their paperwork was a 10-year loan with that big balloon payment at the end. So. No sale means no commission, which means no money for the people who were doing this. From the time you started this investigation and talked to that first customer and then multiple customers started coming out of the woodworks, has General RV ever reached out to you? They maintained from the very beginning that their employees did nothing wrong. Essentially, we did an internal investigation and we found that our employees have done nothing wrong. Obviously, the state investigators disagree with that, but here we are today at the end of 2021 and General RV is not changing their mind. No. Nice job. Thanks, Adam. Uh, one of the biggest names in Utah business is Vivint Smart Home. Over the years, the company has been cited for bad sales practices. And Nate, you found a video that's been cited as evidence in a lawsuit that's nationwide. Tell us about it. Yeah, competitor ADT is suing Vivint Smart Home and accusing it of using unscrupulous methods to take their customers. This video we're about to watch was recorded by a homeowner in Maryland. You'll hear the Vivint employee make a claim about ADT. The man you see in front was then a regional manager with Vivint Smart Home. With him, a trainee. Yes, can I help you? The doorbell video is from August 2019 at a home in Maryland. The first mention of Vivint comes about 55 seconds into the conversation. I'm from the other ADT. A few seconds later, the manager says, I'm not selling anything. A few more seconds after that, he says, ADT sold their company. In fact, ADT had not been sold. So that statement stood out to Maryland Assistant Attorney General Karen Strong. It's a false and misleading statement. That's a violation of the Consumer Protection Act. We showed Strong the video. She saw other concerns. And he has to identify himself, his company, and what he's doing to start off. 
makes you want to put a no soliciting sign up on your door, doesn't it? Nate, this is tricky and deceptive. Do these tactics even work? with homeowners? Uh, depends a little bit on your definition of work. Um, if you look at the lawsuit that ADT filed, they attached a list of about 250 similar episodes. And when you go through that list, it makes pretty clear that a lot of people did wind up signing over with Vivint Smart Home, not realizing they were actually switching companies. And so some of those folks, you know, it impacted their credit or they had to go back and try to get out of the Vivint contract and stuff like that. And then when you keep looking at the, uh, the complaint, it also points out that a lot of customers don't complain at all. So we don't know how many people switched over to Vivint Smart Home that are still with Vivint Smart Home. I know this has obviously been difficult for Vivint as a company. Is this the only trouble they've had to deal with this year? No. Um, so Vivint Smart Home earlier this year settled with the Department of Justice. It announced a $3.2 million settlement with the company. Then the Federal Trade Commission announced a $20 million settlement. Both cases have to do with how Vivint was signing up customers who in some cases didn't consent to accounts in their names. One FTC commissioner referred to this as identity theft. There's still lawsuits against Vivint over all the sales practices we've talked about here. We'll watch to see if there's any resolution to those cases in 2022, Kelly. As far as Vivint, though, as a company, what are they saying? Are they just bad apples within their sales force? That's kind of Vivint's explanation for a lot of this, yes, that um, you know these were rogue actors, that they've fired or terminated a lot of people that were doing this. Uh, you know, some of AT ADT's complaints actually addresses that, that there's some contradictory evidence there. Nate and Adam, thank you so much. We'll have much more from the Fox 13 News investigative team right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to this Fox 13 News special presentation. Over the past half hour, we've talked about some of the biggest investigations our investigative team of reporters have tackled. But we've reported on many more stories that have a wide impact on Utahns during the past year. Let's take a quick look at some of them. First up, our investigation entitled Reading, Writing and Real Estate, a story exposing how the polygamous Kingston Group owns and operates a 100% white public school funded by taxpayers and why the group is also facing multiple questions and accusations regarding its taxes. Now to Box Elder County and a story revealing why prosecutors decided not to charge a convicted sex offender who spent days volunteering on a high school campus near Tremonton. Multiple law enforcement experts say the investigation into the sex offender was incomplete and mediocre, possibly because the suspect used to be a police officer. And our series, Censoring Suicide. Our team dug into why the Granite School District did not follow the advice of mental health professionals when they ripped out a page from the yearbook honoring a student who died by suicide. The series also revealed not all school districts in Utah comply with state law requiring a suicide response program. Another investigation that made national headlines was the problems with the Moab Police Department including how they handled the domestic violence report between Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito. Angel's Landing is perhaps the most iconic hike in Utah. The Fox 13 investigative team told you how 13 people have fallen and died on the trail since 2000. Later in 2021, the National Park Service announced a reservation system for the trail. The ranger said the reservations are more about crowds than deaths. Speaking of high places, mountain goats live in the LaSalle Mountains near Moab, but the investigative team told you how the goats aren't indigenous and environmentalist groups say they're harming plants found nowhere else on Earth. A study determining the goats impact is expected in 2022. You can find all of these investigative reports on our website, fox13now.com. Just click on the Fox 13 Investigates tabs right on the top of the page. If you have a story you'd like Fox 13 News to investigate, send an email to iteam at fox13now.com or call our tip line. The number is 801-536-1314. Thank you so much for joining us for this Fox 13 News special report.